vamos a iniciar con tu primer gol en la actuación de Only Bush Way Out. Ok, man. <laughs> John said that uh, before we start talking about the latest and uh, more recent roles, let's do it like we always do, talking about the first role, the only way out, man. What can you tell us? Oh, well, as a little boy, I loved movies because it was two hours that my father would leave me alone. You know, he wasn't uh, my biggest fan. And then when I was six years old, I fell in love with Bruce Lee when he was Cato. And then... Six years later, I saw him again in a movie, and then I saw I joined karate, and my karate instructor went on. Uh, my karate instructor, when I was 13, he went on to become a world champion kickboxer. And because he was a world champion, and the film industry was first coming to Vancouver back in the early 1980s, and the stunt guys thought, you know, if we had a world champion in our group, it would make us look good. So they, my my instructor, my, my teacher, became a stuntman, and because... I had become his sparring partner. He he dragged me along, but it was Ken Kersinger that took me aside and said, "Brad, if you get a headshot and a resume and a and a pager, I will take you around and introduce you to everybody you need to know." So that's how I got in the film industry. It's really all thanks to Ken. I mean, Ken and I were doing you know background extra work forty years ago, <laughs> and we're going for lunch on Friday. So he's a very good friend of mine. Por supuesto. Bueno, si recordamos el primer gol, también recordamos el primer Stuntman. Es una película muy hermosa, de hace muchísimos años, pero la verdad vale la pena. What do you remember uh, of your first job as a Stuntman with the journey of Natty Gan? The journey of Natty Gan, yes. I it was um, 39 years ago. I uh, Tony got me hired on this thing and... Um, Basically, it was a John Cusack film, and these people were getting killed, kicked, pardon me, kicked out of a uh, boarding home because they were poor, and some of us locals attacked the police. It was a very simple thing, and, um, you know, it seems like it was yesterday, but that was <laughs> almost 40 years ago, yeah. I did my first day on a movie set in 83 as, a, as an extra, and then in 84, I got my first stunt. Maravilloso. Bueno, ahora sí hablemos sobre el tema del tergot. Mr. Hoss junto con también te jalo with Fresh. Bueno, vamos a hablar sobre Mr. Hoss y Michael Myers. Bueno, en Mr. Hoss, ¿cuál es la experiencia más increíble que tuviste con David Madison? ¿Y qué personaje del tergot le gustaría a usted regresar como Michael Myers con un verso? Well, as Michael Myers, uh, there's always been talk about Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees because my little experience with horror is with Halloween and Friday uh, the 13th. When I was a young man, I had a girlfriend with really big boobs, so she got to watch the, only the movie she wanted to watch was lots of horror. So when I broke up with her, I was like, okay, now I don't have to watch horror anymore. So I would like to take on uh, Jason Voorhees as long as I don't lose. Uh, Mr. Hush was a great experience because I made some lifelong friends, but David Madison is um, delusional about who he is in the movie-making world. I mean, I love David, don't get me wrong, but David's a little off, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I don't want to, you know, I, uh, for example, on my IMDB page, as soon as you go there, there's a video of Mr. Hush, and I don't know how to get rid of it. But I know David's the one that orchestrated that because if I could take one credit off of my resume, it would be Mr. Hush. It's David's okay. a great guy, but he doesn't have a clue what he's doing when it comes to making movies. That movie is shouldn't even be called a movie. You should take the DVD and use it for a coaster with your drinks. And that's all I'm going to say. It's okay, man. And kudos for that uh, showdown with... The amazing Jason, only if Ken is the one behind the mask. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, John, continua. La mayor parte sobre ser especialista del riesgo es lo más increíble, porque lo que yo me doy cuenta es que en el tema del terror también es muy, muy increíble y es sobre la cabaña del terror. También hay otros aspectos. Pero, ¿cuál es el reto más difícil que puedo afrontar en alguna película 
o serie, porque también estuvo en, un, en una serie que es bastante importante. Uh, what is the, we know that as a stone, challenge are everywhere, man. And you acted uh, as a stone in a lot of series, movies of different genres. What is the biggest challenge you face off? Well, acting, I am very shy with cameras. Uh, even today, if you point your iPhone at me, I get kind of anxious because when I was little, Sundays in your best suit in the front yard with the box camera and film was very expensive and we were poor. Anyway, if you made a face, if your hair was out of place, if you looked away or closed your eyes, you get smacked in the head. So I get very nervous when people point cameras at me. But the challenging part for a stunt man was work on other skills. I got into the uh, film industry because I was a big guy who could punch and kick a little bit. But now the kids today are so much more talented and there's so much. They're all Jet Lee with the fanciness, you know. I mean, it's unbelievable. But, you know, I had to go and get my scuba gear ticket. I had to learn how to ride a dirt a motorcycle, dirt and street bike. I had to learn how to slide cars. Very important as a stunt guy to know how to drive a car. Um, took acting lessons to be a better uh, a stunt guy, but I can't act to save my life. You saw Mr. Hush. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, and also, you know, the thing is, politically, in the film industry, in the stunt world, you can't be a completely authentic with people um, because you, they're they're not just friends, they're work associates, and sometimes they're your boss, and so you really kind of got up, and I'm a big mouth, so <laughs> those were the challenges for me, but I, um, I uh, you know, I, since I was a little boy, I wanted to be in the movies, and as I get older, if I have to go back to being... Just the extra, you know, I don't care. I, I just love being on a movie set, you know. There's always food. You can sit there and read your book or have a nap. You can flirt with the girls, and it's a, it's a great life. And it's never the same two days in a row. It's not like sitting in a cubicle for 40 years. Oh, my goodness. How they do that, I don't know. Anyway. But, man, it's crazy because as an actor, you had appeared in, we will, I will say, cult with the at the end and cool movies because um, time code and it's crazy because why shit in Latin America is like a, it's like a culture. In fact, John is asking me a favor to ask you about why shit because I don't know if you know that the Latin American dubbing is one of the best dubbings. Here's why shit is like a, like, like, yes, like, like a religion, man. It's crazy because <laughs> that movie get pounded, but, Here we love it. So tell me about why. Really? Thank God. Really? Yes. Andrea, yes. I will address. I would tell you that uh, that's interesting. I'm glad you told me that because when I get residual checks, you know, after you be appear on camera in a project with a with a, a stunt contract, you get residuals every once in a while. And White Chicks always pays very well, but it's on Netflix up here. But I I, I love that it's now it's popular down there. But So that was just um, because I was my size and I could fight uh, because the good guys are always a little bit smaller. So they're not beating up a little guy, you know, so I always made a good villain and I could make faces. And um, yeah, that scene where in the ice cream shop, the right, all those guys are friends of mine, you know. So when I watch the movies today, because it was 20 years ago, it's so much fun. It's not my kind of movie, but Because I was in it with friends, of course, I love it. And um, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. And uh, <laughs> that's great. Man, it's always on rerun in Latin America. And, and that's like a religion. All, every really? Time, every time it's on yes. TV, we need to watch it. But let me tell you, let me tell you. Latinos love that movie for the Latin America dubbing. It's... It's, it's, man, it's hilarious. If I think that you're seeing when they start with Guantanamera, everybody yeah. starts laughing. Yeah, man, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you made my day, you made my day. John, no necesito traducir. Yeah, but Pero, no, yo, después te cuento. Te imagino que a ti te encanta la cena de Guantanamera, John. Sí, por favor. <laughs> Listo, continúa. Bueno, tengo dos últimas producciones porque hay un mensaje para Brady y es sobre, bueno, está Happy Slater. Es una, 
es una gran voz que dio. Obviamente está Felicity Rose, está obviamente de Sherry en todo eso. Entonces quisiera preguntarle por esa en tu voz y por otra producción que es bastante increíble. Jamás me lo esperaba. Lazarus Apocalypse. Man, it's crazy and beautiful because you did your own version of Michael in Happy Slashers. I don't know for the kids or for the crazy kids, but also uh, tell us more because John really loved your role in Lazarus Apocalypse, man. Whatever John watched the most crazy as movies, so making a, in fact he loved Ho he loved Mr. Hodge, man. You have to forgive him. Oh my god. I appreciate that, but um Well, you know, he sees one thing because he's a fan of the genre. I see something different, you know. Um, but I appreciate you guys very much, you know. And um, <laughs> uh, the, the the name that we work on sometimes is only the working title, and they change because I don't know which movies you're talking about. And you know what? <laughs> I've had people say to me, "I saw you in this movie," and I go, "I never worked on that movie," but because they changed the name, um, so I'm not sure which movies you're <laughs> talking. <laughs> I can ask John about the cast. So uh, let me. Okay. John. Yeah. Es que, es que con Lazarus Apocalypse parece, ¿no? Parece que esa película le cambiaron el nombre. Así que por favor, dime el nombre del, del casting. ¿Y quién está en el casting o el director? Natalie Victoria. El director es Thomas J. Churchill. Thomas J. Churchill es el director. Natalie Victoria es on the casting. Eh, se llama The Life of the Living Dead, ¿no? The Life of the Living Dead. Yes. Así se llama en inglés. Oh, oh, oh. Festival of the Living Dead? John, que si es Festival de los Muertos Vivientes, Festival yes. of the Living Dead. Yes. yes, that one, man. That, eh. Yes, I just did that a few, uh, well, I guess, I don't know how long it was, six months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend is the stunt coordinator, and the girls that directed are friends of mine. So, yeah, yeah, that was, <laughs> they only hired me because I was so fat. Thank know? God they hired you, man. Yes, exactly. Yeah, vaya yeah. con Dios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, vaya con Dios. But John, I know, John, creo que tienes algo más que decir, ¿no? Sí. Eh, bueno, me, tengo mi última pregunta, y es, ¿cómo define su trabajo en una palabra? Okay, I will love this. How do you define your word, your career, in one word? Nostalgic. Yes. And let Because, me tell you why. I really love your role on Time Cop. I don't know if you love it, but I love it. Tell on, me more. On Time Cop? Yes. With Van Damme? Yes. Yeah. Um, that was a very uh, a big movie for me because I was not in the stunt group yet. They have a, a couple stunt groups here, but the big one was Stunts Canada. And the coordinator on that show, because I wasn't in the group, he did not want to hire me. But he was rehearsing another show, and he broke his leg on a motorcycle. So uh, a, a, a girl, Melissa Stubbs, took over as the coordinator. She phoned me, and she said, Brad, I need you to do a fight scene with Van Damme, but you got to do a good job because they've amalgamated these two characters And they do, have not liked the Canadian stunt guys yet because it's very political between the Canadians and Americans. So my first day on set, I beat up Jean-Claude's stunt double and the director came out from the camera and he said, well, no need to shoot that again. Got it in one take and they shoot everything four or five times. And then I had the fight scene with... Anyway, thank you for enjoying. It's It's... It's my second favorite Jean-Claude movie. My favorite Jean-Claude movie is a movie called uh, Legionnaire, where he's a French foreign legion guy. Yeah, great movie. Great movie. Tell me, man, because I interrupt you and I had to, for, you have to forgive me, but why nostalgic, man? I needed to talk about Time Cut, but why is nostalgic? What I well, because when I think of my career today and I realize I'm at the very end, Uh, maybe sentimental is a better word, but I really miss the life. I miss my friends. I miss the money. I miss I miss the um, the notoriety. You know. Now I just sit in my apartment like an old man waiting to die. And um, during the pandemic, I was drinking and eating my boredom away, and I gained a bunch of weight. So I'm trying to get back into shape because even as uh, 
uh, old as I am, if I get into good shape, I can still do the basics. And sometimes they want older looking guys. I mean, uh, my buddy Tom Morgan, who also played Michael Myers, he's, uh, I think, older than me, but he, uh, you know, his career was slowing down. And then the Pirates of the Caribbean, and he was on four of those movies every day making big dinero. So I really miss it. I really, I really miss, uh, I, I, like I said, I love being on movies. Ken and I did a movie, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and I hadn't been on set in years. And I was in my room in my makeup and my mask and all that stuff. And then Kenny was in the room next to me. He knocks on the door. He says, Brad, come over and visit me. And I went down the stairs and it was just hitting me that this might be the very last time you ever get to experience this. And I sat, <laughs> I, I sat down beside Ken. And I just burst into tears. He says, what's the matter? I go, oh, it's just bothering me. I said, I just missed this so much. He says, I didn't think you missed it at all because you never talk about it. And I said, I never talk about it because I can't. I'll get too, uh, too upset because I love the movies. I wish I was a, a better actor, but as you get older, you know, they need older actors in Vancouver. The young stars get hired in LA, but the supporting, you know, so we, we, we you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> Vamos a, por último, el mensaje de dedicatoria. Yo sé que es un poquito largo, pero por lo menos, al menos a lo que pueda, Andrés. Okay, man. Uh, here it comes for paragraphs. Because uh, this is a message, so please, I hope my English is the perfect one. So I will start. Throughout your standing career, you had performed stunts and feats that had taken the audience's breath away. Your professionalism and outstanding skills had elevated the level of the productions in which you had participated, and your commitment to authenticity and excellence has been truly inspiring. As an actor, you had brought characters to life in unique and memorable, in memorable ways, capturing the audience's attention with your talent and versatility. Your screen presence has added depth and emotion to every project in which you had participated. And yes, it's true. Even that you say nobody's true. On behalf of movie fans and those of us who admire your hard work, we want to express our sincere appreciation for your dedication to the entertainment industry. Your legacy will lead on in the memory of those who had enjoyed, enjoyed your performances and witnessed your amazing feats. Thank you, Brady Lorek for your impressive contribution to the world field and for being an inspiration to generation of field lovers. And don't forget about it. Andreas, get a hold of me anytime. And like I said, I want your name, your full name, your at mailing address, and also your t-shirt size. Oh my God. I will tell that to John. John, yes. es lo único que traduciré. Por favor, envíale direcciones, eh, correos, obviamente, y tallas de camisetas. Bueno, yo soy XL. Yo también. <laughs> okay, man. Man, the camera is yours, so you want to tell your social media so people can follow you and send a big hi to Colombia, to whatever you want. To the people from Latin America, good lost white sheets, man. We, we call it, ¿Dónde están las rubias here? <laughs> Go ahead. Guys, I'm old and I'm not big in the social media, but I am on Facebook if you want to friend me. Um... I'm on Instagram, but I don't know how to use it, you know, and guys, I'm on my devices too much. I want to get back to reading and going outside for a walk, but I please keep in touch uh, when you want. If you ever want to interview me again, if there's any way I can help you guys, I really appreciate everything you've said. God bless. And uh, like I said, via con Dios and um, send those emails to me and I will send some stuff to you soon. Vaya con Dios and... We will send the emails, John. No se lo olvide enviar los emails, por favor, John. Por favor. John, vaya con Dios. Thank you so much, Brady. Uh, oh, Brady. Uh, Brady. Brady. I'm sorry Amigo. for the connection. Amigo. Yeah, you bet. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thank you. No, bye, bro. Bye, bye. Vaya, con, vaya, vaya con Dios, bro. Bye, bye. Thanks, Andreas. Bye. We'll be